Which marriage is what brings us together today. Wife say man and wife. The chalice with the palace is the brew that is true. Hi guys, so welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and this is This Provincial Life. So today we're going to be doing a spoiler review of My Lady Jane, where I'm going to be delving more into the character development, the writing style, the plot, and the pacing, and just basically anything that fits my fancy um, that struck me in this book. When you see the little icon that I'm going to put up above, when you see that disappear, that means that you need to uh, vacate the premises immediately if you don't want to be spoiled about this book. This book uh, is written by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and JD, Jody Meadows, and they are a trio that have written My Lady Jane, which is the first book in this companion series. You do not need to read My Lady Jane in order to read My Plain Jane. So the idea behind this series is they take famous Janes either in history or in fiction and they rewrite their stories in a fantastical, comedic way. So My Lady Jane follows Lady Jane Grey and there's some fantastical elements in that. And then we have My Plain Jane, which follows Jane Eyre, which is a classic novel and it has some ghost elements to it and it just follows um, the basic lady, I mean the basic Jane Eyre story and then they bring in all the other characters and then they introduce some new characters as well. Another thing that I feel is very important to note is this is based on a classic. If you have not read Jane Eyre and you really would like to read Jane Eyre and it's on your TBR, it's really burning in you to read it, I would read that first before picking this up because it does spoil a lot of things. If that is the case, I would read Jane Eyre first and then come back and read this. However, if you have no desire to read Jane Eyre, you don't read classics and it doesn't really appeal to you at all, feel free to pick this up anyways because it doesn't read as a classic. It's very easy to read. It's very flowy, simple, and quirky. So don't feel like if you don't like Jane Eyre and you have no desire to read Jane Eyre, you cannot read this. If you want to know more about My Plain Jane and you haven't read it, I do have a spoiler-free review. I'll leave it linked above so you can go and check that out. I do go into a little bit more detail of my thoughts, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to get into the spoilery parts of the review. So character development. I liked Jane. She followed the story of Jane Eyre very well. Like a, They uh, brought up a lot of the main points in the Jane Eyre novel. So her being in the orphanage and being locked in the red room and having her see a ghost and she thinks it's her relative. And that's where this whole thing springs from where it's like, oh, ghost elements. And I, I liked I liked that a lot. I liked that they they decided that was going to be the fantastical element that they're going to put in because it just seemed the most natural. I wish they would have did a little bit more of her like journey as she gets to uh, Rochester's house because I feel like that's a really important journey for her as she's trying to figure out who she is as a person and I feel like that was kind of missing in here. So something that was really cool in this is that they brought in Charlotte Bronte who is the author of Jane Eyre and I loved that because as as you're reading this book, you know Charlotte is being inspired to write a story about Jane Eyre. And I love that aspect. And I loved to see her like be this introverted, like, I mean, not introverted, but like kind of this distant person that was constantly like writing in the background and like writing down random things. And I loved that. And I liked the idea of Charlotte Bronte writing about Jane and like being inspired. I kind of like broke down the wall between Charlotte Bronte and the, the actual book of Jane Eyre. So the other characters, I felt like Rochester was portrayed well enough as well as Rochester could be with the plot twists that they had decided to put in there when they decided to put in the element of Rochester as a ghost um, like inside of 
taking charge of Rochester's body for so many years. It was like, it took Mr. Rochester's character away for me because I love Mr. Rochester. He's trying to do the good thing in a very hard situation and he's he, he knows he needs help. He knows he needs companionship, but he doesn't, and he wants companionship with Jane, but it's, it's, it's a tricky situation is what it is. And, and I feel like that was kind of dropped in this story. And I, I feel like Mr. Rochester was probably my least favorite character in the story because he just didn't fulfill like that tension and that like that Mr. Darcy tension that I love in classic romance novels. <laughs> so with that being said, I loved, I loved the two side characters. So I loved Helen and Helen is the ghost that um, is Jane Eyre's best friend and that um, links back to the actual story of Jane Eyre and I loved that element. I loved that like her best friend still gets to be with her and I loved that. I loved that she was 14 years old and she was still trying to figure out what the world was like when she had been dead for years and trying to understand how she can help Jane and I liked that element a lot. I liked Helen. She was quirky. She was independent. She was strong. Um, and she was funny. She did a lot of funny things. And then my absolute favorite character in the entire book was Branwell. And for some reason inside of my head, this is the person that played this character. Sometimes that happens. I don't do it on purpose. It just kind of happens. And so, and I love him in Fantastic Beasts. And so for some reason, this is the character that popped into my head playing this character. And it just made it even better because he just, he could see ghosts, but he just wasn't very good at being a ghost hunter. And he just, he tried so hard and it just fell flat. And, and then by the end, he was just, he like helped in such a, an amazing way. And it was just so fun and so different. And I, I loved him. I absolutely loved him. And I loved how he kind of like brought everyone back together and was like kind of the glue that was kind of like, hey, let's, let's bring the crew back together. Let's fix this. Let's figure this all out. And I really, really liked him as a character. And now for the antagonist, I really liked how his, like you could see his thought process of why he decided to do these things. He's just not being blatantly evil for the sake of being evil like he has a motive and he has this process that he's gone through to kind of follow like to follow his choices and I that's one of the things that's really important to me in a story is to have a story that follows uh, the antagonist but doesn't just give him the the label of antagonist and he's like he's evil and then it's the end I like to have some reasoning and and some complexity to those characters. And I feel like this was done well. It could have done a little bit, done, uh, could have been done a little bit better. So, and as for the plot, it moved quickly. It had a pretty simplistic plot. Um, plot. It did borrow a lot from Jane Eyre because I mean, that's the whole purpose of this book. Um, and so if you enjoy the plots of Jane Eyre, you're going to enjoy the plots of this. However, looking at writing style a little bit more deeply, um, they do some nods to some current popular films. So they do like Princess Bride where they do the marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. That type of thing. And like when Rochester says wife, say man and wife. Like I enjoyed those types of elements in My Lady Jane because I didn't know the Lady Jane like Lady Jane Grey story very well. So those elements kind of brought in that funky little like modern twist to it because it's like, did they really say that? I mean, really, did he really say man and wife? And, and I liked it in my Lady Jane, but in my plain Jane, it took away from the story because I already knew Jane Eyre so well that when they did those types of things, I was like, meh. Like it, it didn't do anything for me. I didn't dislike it, but it was just kind of like, 
I could have done without that because we were already borrowing so much of the story from uh, Jane Eyre. And then they also did some nods. I don't know if anyone else really noticed this, but they did some nods to a musical called Court Jester. And they do like this twist, this play with words where it's like the chalice with the palace is the brew that is true. If you know, if you've seen Court Jester, let me know because it's one of my favorite musicals, but no one has ever heard of it. And they did that thing with like the, what is it, like the parcel in the castle or something like that. And they did that type of thing where they were like jaunty and, and like bantering back and forth trying to figure out this type of situation. And I felt like that was a little bit heavy handed. So I felt like they were just borrowing from all of these different really popular books and then putting them all together or books or stories or whatever and smashing them together. But with that being said, I didn't hate this book, obviously. I really enjoyed it. I would recommend it to a lot of different people that just want to be entertained, that really don't read that much, or they read so much and they just need a break and something that's easy and light. Um, I definitely recommend this. I gave it four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. So if you feel like picking it up, like, do it. Like, do it.